Hi, I'm going to demonstrate just how easy it is to make 10 pints of craft beer in your very own kitchen. Brewing doesn't have to involve complicated process or expensive equipment. Stick around and see exactly how. We're the Malt Miller and this is Brewing in Your Kitchen. The beer we're brewing today is called Palisade. It's an American pale ale. This is inspired by those classic American pale ales that kick-started the craft beer movement in the west coast of the US. In the kit, we've got all of the required grain, those awesome American west coast cascade hops, and the yeast to ferment the beer. Let me talk you through the equipment that you're gonna need. We've got a fermenting vessel with a tap and an airlock. We've got some sanitizer, a bottling stick, a hydrometer, some cleaner, a grain bag to separate the grain from the wort, a plastic spoon and a boil kettle. It's actually really important that your boil kettle is big enough. You can use any saucepan, but it really needs to be about 12 litres to be able to carry out this process. The other thing you'll need is some bottles for when you're packaging your beer. The equipment bundle required, including the ingredients to brew the beer and your bottles, is less than £65. And of course, this equipment can be used time and time again. The only thing we need to purchase extra is the ingredients to make each batch. We're using one of our specialist 12 litre brew kettles today. If you want more details about that, check it out in the description. The first part of our brewing process is to make sure that all the equipment we're using is clean, plus the workspace that we're using is also clean. We're going to need to fill our kettle with 9 litres of water and heat it to 66 degrees. This is the first stage where we see our ingredients. We need to place our grain into our muslin bag. We're going to need to do this in a couple of stages. I'm going to cut the corner off and then we're simply going to pour the grain into the muslin bag. Now I have all the grain in the muslin bag. Don't be tempted to do it up right now and I'm going to show you why in a second. Now's the time to add our grain to the water in our kettle. I'm going to add it in slowly. We want all of the grain to be completely wetted. Now I'm going to take my spoon and I'm going to mix the grains within the grain bag trying my hardest not to lose any grain out of the bag. It's important that we don't rush this step. The process is called mashing. It's where the starch that's contained inside the grain is converted into sugar, which in turn will be converted into alcohol by the yeast during the fermentation process. Once you're happy that this is thoroughly mixed, it's time to close the drawstring on the bag and add the lid back to the kettle. We're now gonna leave this at 66 degrees for a period of one hour. It's really important to release as much of the sugar from the grain as possible. So I'm gonna return from time to time and give it a bit of a stir. You may well find that during the mashing process, the temperature drops a little. Don't worry about it. Just use your heat source to top up the temperature within the mash. What we're actually doing here is a simplified process of what happens in every brewery up and down the country. There are actually enzymes present in the malt and when it's steeped in warm water, these enzymes convert the starch that's contained in the malt into fermentable sugar. This gives us alcohol at the end of the process. At this point in the process, we have a little time to spare. So we're going to prepare our fermenter and we're going to get it sanitized, ready to receive our wort. By the way, wort is the term for unfermented beer. Within the equipment bundle, we've got what we call no rinse sanitizer. You just add two milliliters to each liter of water to make up the solution. Anything that is submerged or touches that solution will be sanitized, fit for brewing. There's no need to wash it off. Whilst preparing your fermenter ready to receive your work, the easiest way to do it is disassembled. We'll just place all the parts in the sanitizing solution and build the fermenter from there. Once our fermenter is assembled, we can then add some sanitizing solution. 
we'll place the lid on and give it a shake to make sure the entire surface of the fermenter has been covered with the sanitizing solution. Once we're confident that the sanitizing solution has covered the entire surface of the fermenter, we can pour it back out again, reclose the lid so that it's ready to receive our work. It's really important in brewing that anything that comes into contact with our work once it's been boiled has been sanitized. That's the end of our one hour mash period. It's now time to remove our grain. I'm gonna take the lid off the kettle. I'm gonna gather the grain bag up. I'm gonna be a little bit careful because obviously this is at 66 degrees. I'm gonna let it drain for just a few seconds. But what I've actually got here is a clean bowl that I can transfer this into. Now actually this bit's quite important because we're gonna catch some more of this liquid in this bowl and we're gonna tip it back into the kettle before we reach a boil. I'm now gonna turn the heat source on and wait for it to come up to a boil. As the work comes to the boil, we do need to keep an eye on it. It actually boils in a very similar way to milk. So as it reaches the boiling point, it actually rushes up the pan. It makes an awful mess if it boils over. So just keep a real strong eye on it. We need to weigh out our first hop addition and actually adding these hops just as the work comes to the boil really helps stopping a boil over. We're using the same hops right throughout this brew. Our first addition is just three grams. Our work is just about to boil. It's time to add our three gram cascade hop addition. So just as it comes to the boil, I'm actually gonna give it just a little bit of a stir. This helps calm it down a little bit and not rush up the pan. This first hop addition adds the all important bitterness to the beer. The hop additions that we're gonna do later on during the boil process will add more flavor and aroma. The total boil time for our work is 30 minutes. After 15 minutes that it's been boiling, we're gonna add another hop addition. I'll weigh out our eight gram hop addition now. This is gonna go in with just 15 minutes left of the boil. This second hop addition adds more bitterness to the beer, but we're really starting to layer on some flavor now that this classic hop is renowned for. Let's add our eight gram Cascade hop addition. We don't need to worry about stirring this in. The boil will do its thing. We've come to the end of our boil period, but we're not quite finished yet. We need to add some aroma hops. Now we need to do this when the wort's about 80 degrees. We're gonna chill it down to 80 degrees by putting it in a sink full of cold water. To speed up this chilling process, we're gonna stir the wort. We can further speed up this process by also stirring the water in the sink. Of course, we need to make sure we're using a different spoon because the spoon we're using to stir the wort needs to be sanitized. So we've brought our wort down to 80 degrees. We're now gonna add what we call our flame out hops. These are all about aroma and flavor. We're gonna pop the lid back on and leave them to steep for 10 minutes. Our 10 minute steeping time is now up. We now need to get our kettle of hot work back to the sink so that we can chill it down to yeast pitching temperature, which is 20 degrees. But we're gonna use exactly the same method as previously discussed, stirring our work with our sanitized spoon and stirring our cooling water with a separate spoon. This is a really quick and efficient way of cooling when the groundwater is really cold. During the summer months, you might wanna think about putting some ice into the cooling water. The other thing that will speed it up is to replenish the cold water in the sink. So our wort is now down to about 20 degrees, which is yeast pitch in temperature. We're about where we need to be. We're gonna lift the pan out of the sink. We're gonna place it onto the worktop and we're gonna sit and leave it for half an hour. Now this is actually quite an important step. It will allow all of the proteins to stick together, drop to the bottom of the vessel, and that way we can decant clean wort from the top. We've waited for our half an hour. It's now time to get the wort into our fermenter. At this stage, it's quite important that we just open the tap gently, just to start off with, just for the first half liter or so. We also wanna get some oxygen into the wort at this stage. This really helps our yeast ferment our wort and change it into beer. We can do that by lowering the fermenter slightly so the wort drops into it, creating some oxygen. Right, we're at our five litre mark. I'm gonna place the fermenter on the worktop, place the lid on loosely, 
just while we get our yeast ready. All that's to do is to sprinkle our yeast in. We're going to do that right now. Now I'm going to clip the lid so it's tightly closed and we're going to top our airlock up with sanitizing fluid. You now need to leave your beer to ferment somewhere at approximately 20 degrees for seven to 10 days. We can then package the beer. Stick around and we'll show you exactly how. To check that fermentation has finished, we need to check using our hydrometer. We need to draw off a sample from our fermenter so that we can check the final gravity. We should be down to about 1010. Once we know fermentation is complete, it's a really good idea to pop the fermenter in the fridge for 24 hours. That way it really helps clear the beer. Let's get all the equipment ready that we need to bottle the beer. Let's make some sanitizing solution. We need to make up about five liters. Remember, it's two milliliters per liter of water for our sanitizing solution. Give it a good stir. And now it's time to get our bottles ready. To package our beer, we're using Coopers. These are PET plastic bottles with screw caps. We're gonna prepare 10 of these bottles. We're gonna take our chilled beer out of the fridge, ready for packaging. Remember that everything needs sanitizing caps and bottling stick and the bottles themselves. We're going to place our bottling stick onto our sanitized tap. We now need to remove the airlock so the sanitizing solution doesn't get sucked back into the fermenter. We can now turn our tap on. One last spray of sanitizer. Now it's time to get our bottles ready. We need to have them in the no rinse sanitizer solution. Just make sure the sanitizer touches all of the inside surface of the bottles. We can then shake it out. Next, we're gonna put a measured half teaspoon of standard table sugar into each bottle. We'll then use the bottling stick with the valve on the bottom to make sure the bottles are completely filled. The bottling stick leaves the right amount of headspace in the bottle when we withdraw it. Before screwing the cap tight, we need to squeeze the bottle to reduce this airspace. We now need to repeat until the fermenter's empty. The bottles need to be left somewhere warm for a week. That way, re-fermentation will happen inside the closed bottle. This will give you beer with carbonation. Okay, so we've brewed our beer, we've fermented it, we've packaged it into our bottles, and now it's time to do a taste test. So just a couple of things before we actually try the beer. So at packaging time, we added some sugar to the bottle, and then we put the beer on top. Now what that does is re-ferments the beer inside the closed bottle, which gives us our carbonation. And we can tell that's happened because we've now got a headspace back in the bottle and the bottle is firm to touch. So we know that carbonation is in the bottle. At this point, actually having some patience is really quite important. So we've got to this stage where it's firm to the touch it's a good idea to leave it a few more days, perhaps another five or six days before we actually try it. Beer's a funny thing. So it goes through a maturation period where it will peak into the best flavor possible and then it will start to die off. Let's try the beer now. So what we're aiming for is an American pale ale with that classic cascade hop hit. And I think we've been really successful here. So we're getting cascade type citrus flavors, but also kind of that orangey marmalade-y, um, almost like a texture as well as a flavor. And a lot of this is also coming from the malt because this beer's got a really good malt background to it as well. It's quite full in the mouth. What we're actually aiming for, I think we've got really close to making in our kitchen a West Coast Pale Ale. To be able to make beer of this quality using simple equipment in your own kitchen is absolutely fantastic. It's been a great experience, great fun, and we ended up with such a fantastic product at the end. You can check out all of our kitchen brewer recipes on our website. I'll pop a link in the description below. And also, if you haven't got the equipment at home, there's also some equipment bundles that we've put together to help you along the way. If you want to learn more about brewing at home, there's stacks of information on our YouTube channel. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. 